Parsevir begins with uh, Avram Avinu sitting at the entrance of his tent, and he just had a bris mila. The Torah, the Forshim say that the Torah begins with this because we're going to go to Sdom. It's going to be the destruction of Sdom. So the Torah wants to show us the contrast between an Avram Avinu, who represents everything good, and the people of Sdom, who represents everything bad. That Avram Avinu, from the vantage point of a bris mila, dedication to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, sitting at the entrance of the tent, dedication to people, and then looking down at Sdom, where in both areas it's the diametric opposite. So, uh, they go to Sdom, and uh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says he's going to let Avravina know what he's doing to Sdom, and then we find the bargaining session, the first bargaining session in history, from Avinu bargaining with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, perhaps myself, us in the bunny, that's why Jews always bargain, not sure. But Avram Avinu charged 50, 45, 40, 30, 20. So, you know, somebody once came to uh, Satmar of Reveal from Satmar, and Reveal from Satmar is possibly the most vocally anti-Zionistic gudel that we've had in the last couple of generations. Uh, and, uh, he, you know, he said exactly what he thought, and he wrote exactly what he said. And say, so Sentra Biel from Satmar, I don't understand. Look at Avram Avinu here, the people of Sodom, and he's so wicked, they're so wicked. Yet Avram Avinu, he, he, you know, he, he tries to get them out of trouble. And you are constantly criticizing the Zionists. Look at that. Why don't you behave like Avram Avinu? So Biel from Satmar said, the Torah only reports to us what Avram Avinu said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. On behalf of the Anshe Sodom, he begged, he petitioned, please HaKadosh Baruch Hu spare them. That was Avravina's love for people. The Torah does not disclose what Avravina said to the people of Stom. When Avravina was confronting the people of Stom, we should be sure that Avravina told the people of Stom, hey people, you got to get your act together because you're doing everything wrong. We could be sure that he was very critical of the people of Stom. And if you all said to this man, you only know what I say to the Zionists, just like Avravina said to the Anche Stom. You don't know what I say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu when I'm davening along on behalf of them. So, the Torah is teaching us that when you're talking on behalf of people, we should always doubt that people should do tshuva, people should improve. The people themselves have to be told. Now, the Malach goes to Stone, flips over the city, and then he says to Lot, in Pesach Zion, he says, Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. So what does don't look back mean? You know, Lot did not want to leave, he had all his money there. The first thing the Malach says to him is, don't look back. You were a sinner, because I'll call Lot Russia. You had all your money there, you had all your resources there, and you're going to have to abandon it all. Don't look back with regret, oh boy, I wish I could still be living the way I was living in Stoke. Don't look back means, forget about the past and do tshuva. The first step in a person doing tshuva is, don't look back. All those things that you used to do, don't even, not only don't be involved in them, but don't even wish you were involved in them. You have to move on. You have to get on with your life in a, in, in, in a, in a different direction. So the first step of don't look back, don't look back means don't miss those things that you were involved in. Number two, don't look back means people often when they do do tshuva, they look back, they think about the things that they've done, the misdeeds, and then they spend time letting it eat away at them, and they may get depressed, and I wish I would have done things differently, and I wish I would have started learning earlier, and so on and so forth. Don't look back means that on the one hand, you have to move away from that, and on the other hand, don't look back, don't let it pull you down, don't waste unproductive time thinking about what could have been. And therefore, what is told, don't look back. Number three, you don't deserve to be able to look back. Because you were in just as much trouble as they were, but you managed to escape one of the chus that you had that you didn't snitch on Avraham Avinu when he said achosihi. So you're getting out, but don't look back. You don't deserve to see the punishment. And number four, don't look back because it's the Shechina that's destroying. The Shechina came to stone to overturn it. Akkadosh Baruch overturned stone. So the Mephorshim say, if a person, the Musar goes, if you would look back in your life, Every step of your way, you look back, you would see the Shekhinah there. You would see HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Ashgach HaPratah there. How did I end up in this place? How did I meet my Zivu? How did I get the position? How? If you look back, you don't deserve to look back because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Shekhinah, the presence is there. 
But every one of us, if we would look back with hindsight, we'd say Akash Baruch presence there. Because it's only Akash Baruch presence in the past that's gotten us to where we are today in the present.